Today, I'm going to show you how to set up and light your SNS kettle for low and slow, baking and roasting, and searing. Hi, I'm Ryan from SNS Grills, and I want to help you get the most out of your SNS kettle by showing you some easy, replicatable methods for lighting it across temperature ranges. But there's a couple of things that we need to do before just about every cook. Clean grates or happy grates. Make sure you've removed any stuck on bits from the last cook using your favorite method. You can remove any leftover ash from the slow and sear by giving it a quick shake and using the ash removal system. If it's been a few days since you've used the kettle and are sure it's burned out, remove the ash pan and dispose of the ashes. Low and slow cooking is generally characterized by cooking at 225 degrees Fahrenheit or 110 degrees Celsius for a really long time. This is where the magic happens for big cuts of meat like brisket, pork butts, or some really tender ribs. And let me show you how to set it up on the SNS kettle. For all of these cooks, I'm going to use the Slow and Sear Deluxe and the Drip and Griddle Pan that makes clean up a snap. Start off with your favorite starter cube or tumbleweed and add 12 charcoal briquettes on top. We'll add more in a little bit, but this will get us the perfect size fire to start. Light the fire starter and get the charcoal going. And then pour one quart of boiling water into the reservoir. And I like to add the water right after I light the charcoal and before the slow and sear heats up. After 10 or 15 minutes, the charcoal should be well lit. Add one chimney or about 100 briquettes of unlit charcoal to the SNS to fill it up. If you'd like a bit more smoke flavor, add two or three small pieces of wood spread out on top of the charcoal. Install the cooking grates, making sure that the opening is over the slow and sear for easy fill-ups later. If you're using a remote thermometer, put the probe wires through the probe hole and put the probe an inch away from the SNS and a couple of inches away from where you plan to put your meat for an accurate reading. Close the lid. When the temperature reaches about 175 degrees Fahrenheit or 80 degrees Celsius, it's time to start closing the vents so we can ease into our target temperature and not overshoot. We're going to fully close the bottom vent, adjust the smoke hole to about half, and the top vents to about one third open. Let's pause there for a quick note about vent settings. The vent settings that I use throughout this video are really good starting points, but you're probably going to have to adapt them to your situation. The temperature inside the kettle is dependent on things like the outside temperature, wind, rain, the altitude where you're at, as well as how much meat you have on the kettle at any given time. Now, as a general rule, if you open up the vents, it'll get hotter. If you close them down, it'll cool off, but you want to wait 10 or 15 minutes between each adjustment to allow things to level off and get to the settled temperature before you move on and try to change it again. And that was my biggest mistake when I first started to learn to cook with charcoal. I made really big adjustments with the vents and I didn't wait long enough in between. And so I ended up having some wild temperature swings and you fight it all day long. It's much better to make small changes, wait a while before you make the next one, and you'll have a much better go of it. If your SNS kettle hits 225 degrees Fahrenheit, but is billowing white smoke like this, wait a bit longer until the smoke turns blue or clear and your taste buds will thank you. With the SNS kettle up to temp and producing clean smoke, it's time to put the meat on. Place the meat over the drip and griddle pan and behind the water reservoir for best results. If you're using a remote thermometer, now's a good time to insert the meat probe and then close the lid. I always get good even heat and I don't need to flip the meat around even on long cooks. A common question that people have is how do you fill the slow and sear with charcoal when it starts to burn out? And first, that's not something that you're going to have to do very often. You should be able to get six to eight hours or even more depending on conditions and the amount of meat that you're cooking before you need to refill it. This process is a little bit different for the lower temperatures than it is when you do a higher like roasting temperatures. So I'm going to show you exactly how it's done. You want to refill the charcoal while the fire is still going strong to help the fresh charcoal light up quickly. With the cherry picker or other barbecue tool, push the charcoal to one side of the slow and sear. This will help remove any ash that might have accumulated during the cook. 
If I were refueling for roasting temperatures, I would just stir the charcoal a bit to remove the ash and then leave it an even layer. With the lit charcoal in one corner, add enough charcoal to fill the SNS and it will look a lot like it did when we started. Baking or roasting is characterized by temperatures above 325 degrees Fahrenheit or 160 degrees Celsius. This is the temperature where I'll roast chickens or turkeys, and I've even been known to make mac and cheese or bake bread using my slow and sear, and it's easier than you think. If your cook is going to be 90 minutes or more, you want to start with a half a chimney of unlit charcoal and put it directly into the slow and sear, which will give us a little bit more burn time. Then we're going to put the lit charcoal right on top of that, and I'm going to show you how that works. The more charcoal you light in the chimney, the hotter your kettle will be. Half a chimney is good for 325 degrees Fahrenheit or 160 degrees Celsius, and a full chimney is good for 425 degrees Fahrenheit or 220 degrees Celsius. Like the vent settings, you can experiment with it a bit to find the amount of charcoal that works best for your conditions. You'll know when the charcoal is fully lit because the smoke will be clear and there'll be a bit of fire visible above the charcoal. The top charcoal will usually still be black when I pull it and put it in the slow and sear. And remember, never fill the reservoir when cooking at these higher temperatures. We're starting with a bigger fire so we don't have to wait as long before we get good smoke or to start closing down the vents. We're going to do that right away. We're going to close up the smoke port, leave the bottom vent about a quarter open, and the top vent about half. After a few minutes, the grill is preheated and it's ready to go. I'm making some chicken thighs that are really going to benefit from the two zones that we just set up out on the kettle. First, it's going to start off on the indirect side until it's just about cooked. The biggest benefit of two-zone cooking is that you can cook directly over the charcoal if you want some flavorful char. And this is the opposite of what I would do for some burgers where I'd start with a half a chimney of charcoal, grill them directly over the fire, and then put them on the indirect side to melt the cheese and come up to temp. Searing on the SNS kettle can give you steakhouse quality crust and it's really easy to do. You start off with a full chimney of lit charcoal and I recommend that you use briquettes because lump charcoal can give lumpy heat and you might end up with some hot spots and cold spots and you won't get as even of a sear. For this cook, I'm taking advantage of the extra sear space on the SNS Deluxe and removing the water reservoir. Light a full chimney of charcoal until the coals are fully lit and put them into the SNS. Remember to keep the vents fully open for searing. These steaks are about an inch thick, so I'm going to go straight for the sear. But if I wanted to do a thicker steak, I might reverse sear it. In that case, I'd set it up for low and slow, and then about 15 minutes before the steaks are ready to get seared, I'd get that chimney of charcoal ready to go, so I can throw them on just as they get the right temperature. There are a few different methods for searing a steak, but I found that searing each side for one minute twice for a total of two minutes per side gives great results. Once you've seared it, you can move the steaks to the indirect side and then cover it with a lid, and that is a great way to get them cooked to your desired temperature. With a bit of practice, you'll master lighting the SNS kettle for any cooking situation. And for more tips, consider subscribing to the channel. And remember, two zones are better than one.